Well, Merry Christmas. Hey, I'm so glad you are here today. I love the words in the Bible. It says, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights. And I'm so glad that tonight we can come and we can celebrate and we can worship the light of lights, that newborn little baby together. And I'm so glad you're here today. And I hope in a special way that you can be able to calm down and be quiet and and be still, and uh, be able to experience God in a mighty way. Now, with that saying, I want all parents with small little babies, for a long, long time, I have worked with young people, and uh, while I speak, they are flirting and talking, and sometimes boys make funny noises, so I promise you, your child is not going to bother me or worry me any bit tonight so you let them keep talking and playing and doing whatever they need to do so you don't worry you just be have a good time tonight so i hope you have a good night and a good day tomorrow and i know we're pr pretty crowded which is a good thing but i still want to take just a minute and let's just welcome each other and just tell somebody how glad you are to see them and tell them merry christmas can we do that <clears throat> thank you It is so good to be in um, the Lord's house, but just to be here to celebrate um, this this wonderful time of year, um, specifically this glorious night. And as um, we celebrate the birth of our Savior, we're going to sing that um, tonight. It's called, Oh, What a Glorious Night. Sing it out, Jesus. 
your salvation when you sent your son, the bright and shining star. We love you, we thank you, and it's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Do you remember your first trip to the planetarium? Probably with your third grade class. More excited to leave school than actually learn anything about science. You know who you were. You find your seat, impatiently waiting for the show to start, ignoring the withering look of your teacher, and then... so small, but so special. That is, I believe how the wise men must have felt. These magi got quite the star show themselves. Except, it was just one star. One bright, magnificent, piercing, brilliant ball of fire. And boy, did they bet a lot on that star. But just like the one they were traveling to see, this star stood out as something special. This one beckoned, follow me. And what a payoff. When they arrived in Bethlehem, they asked, Where is the one born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we've come to worship him. And it got me thinking, is worship a little different the harder the journey to get there? Struggling on the road with others? The type of trip that tests your faith and breaks your back? What's that worship like? I can't speak for the wise men. Maybe they shouted hallelujah, or they knelt in choir reverence. We've all walked our own difficult journeys. And when we got to the other side, we all felt it. The joy we had to fight for tasted just a bit sweeter. And for that bright morning star, the one that caught you in awe when you saw it, well, What else can you do but rejoice when you realize that the journey was always leading you to Jesus?
up here tonight. It's good to see y'all. Good to see you here in this assembly. And I thought about several things tonight. The first goes back all the way to Isaiah. You probably don't remember Isaiah. He predates some of us, but he said, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And he will have the government upon his shoulders. And his name will be Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. And we go on to read in Luke's account of the Gospel. We talked about this event that we know now as Christmas, but it means so, so much more, personally to me. It's not about what I do. It's not about so many things that happen during this time of year. But Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, it says, In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This is the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went on to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from that town of Nazareth to Je uh, Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. That's everything that we're here to celebrate tonight. It's not about some of the tertiary things that we have happen. Certainly not about me. I travel a lot tonight. It's going to be a little cold tonight. But other than that, it's a great time of year as we focus on the Christ child. Pray with me if you would. Lord, we're so thankful for this time where we remember when prophecy was fulfilled and you sent a Savior to us. And through him, we can enter heaven. Through him, we can do so many other things that without him, frankly, I don't know how we could, could get along. We pray now for your glory through the rest of this service. We pray that you will be honored through that. We pray, especially tomorrow, that as Christmas Day comes, that we focus on you and our families, and so many other things that happen during this time of year. We ask this all in the name of Christ. Amen. Merry Christmas.
Thank you, Kendall and Christopher and Santa and uh, the trio, and thank you for being here tonight. Uh, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Now, that's a nursery rhyme and an old English lullaby that we are all very familiar with. But if you really take the time to think about it, it raises an interesting question about what is a star, don't it? How I wonder what you are. Well, in our passage of Scripture tonight, Matthew tells us of that one night, a group of wise men, they looked up and they saw a star, and then they were filled with joy. So let's look at the beginning of that story tonight in Matthew 2, verses 1 through 2. It writes, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. Now we're really not sure what this star was. For years, astronomers have tried to explain this star that the wise men saw up in the sky. In 1614, the pioneer of modern astrology, Johann Kepler, was the first that was really interested in examining this. And in recent days, a Rutgers University astronomer, Michael Menor, has come up with a widely accepted explanation. Now, I can't explain tonight all his findings, except to say that many scholars give much credit to his theory that the star was not just some extremely bright shooting comet going across the sky, but maybe a more of a subdued light from a unique location of several planets. He says it was not some supernova, but it was something that appeared to which someone had to be looking for it in order to see it. Now, in no way am I advocating any particular perspective, except that I am very intrigued that the idea that this star might have been very obvious or it might have been very subtle. But it was something the wise men saw that thousands and thousands of other people didn't see. Whatever it was, it was different. It was special. This was no ordinary star. You see, this star, this specially placed star, served almost like a spotlight shining right on Jesus so that these wise men could go and see and experience and worship this newborn king. Now, a spotlight's purpose is to shine on a certain spot. Uh, it, in, in acting, it shines on the stage where the audience needs to focus, the most important thing on the stage. Well, several years ago, um, our in-house uh, Elvis impersonator was asked to be the surprise entertainment for the, the Yellowwood uh, Christmas party. And they wanted Marty to go all out, and so he did. He wore the whole costume, he rented a limousine, uh, he had bodyguards dressed up in their suits carrying uh, little towels. Uh, he even had a police escort a car pulling in in front of the limousine. Adam was here at the time, and Adam was uh, asked to run the sound, and I was asked to run the spotlight. And this was the plan. The plan was that they were going to have this great dinner, and then afterwards some awards, some recognition would be given out, and then the person that was planning the party would get up and uh, introduce the surprise entertainment. And uh, everything was going great until the last guy who received his award or recognition got very nervous and got very emotional. All right, so he's up there, and he sh it's a tearjerker. All right, it's, he's sharing from his heart. Jimmy Rain is sitting right there, and he's just 
pouring out his soul to Jimmy Rain, thanking him for all that he had done over his life. And in the middle of this heartwarming and wonderful speech, the sirens go off outside, which is the key for Adam to play the music and the media start going with the spotlight. Now, this guy had no idea, and he was in the middle of his, his speech. And he had no clue. No one had a clue. And they started looking around like, what is the sirens? What is going on here? Well, I looked at Adam, and Adam looked at me. He pressed play on the music to the introduction, and I started going crazy with the spotlight. And everybody's like looking like, what in the world is going on? And all of a sudden, the door opens up, and the spotlight goes to the door. And everybody's attention, everybody's focus was on Elvis because the king had arrived. <laughs> well, tonight, what we can learn from the whole story of the wise men is that there are wrong places and there are right places to look for Christmas. The wise men, they started looking in the wrong place. You see, they looked where the human reasoning brought them to look. The star was a sign of the new birth of a new king, so the wise men went to where they thought kings would be born, in the capital city of Jerusalem, at the palace of Herod the Great. But what a mistake that was. They were looking in the wrong place. And if we're not careful, we too can be tempted this Christmas to be looking for the meaning of Christmas all in the wrong places. Maybe we think getting or giving that perfect gift will bring us satisfaction. We imagine that being with family or with that special person will bring us joy. Or if only I could get all the Christmas cards out on time, if, if all the de decorations are up and perfect and beautiful and all the food tastes just right, then and only then will it be a great Christmas. On Christmas Eve, a young brother and sister were sitting in front of their Christmas tree, mesmerized at all the beautiful Christmas lights, while the rest of the family, they were running around trying to put the final touches on the big Christmas party about to be at their house. In the background, those little kids could hear, don't forget to turn on the outside lights. Don't forget to brush your hair and your teeth. Don't forget to turn on the oven. Don't forget to turn the music on. Don't forget to wrap that last present. And then the young little boy got up from the Christmas tree, walked over to their little nativity scene, picked up little baby Jesus, walked back and sat down, and he looked at his sister and said, Sister, don't forget about baby Jesus. Can I suggest something to you tonight? Don't forget baby Jesus. One of the real highlights of Christmas for me is watching the cl classic A Charlie Brown's Christmas. When Charles Schultz first started thinking about creating this Christmas movie, all the major networks were hesitant. They weren't sure if this idea of this type of movie would work. Finally, one network agreed, and the rest is history. Now, there are some great moments, some unforgettable parts of that Christmas classic. I love to see Lucy's reaction when Snoopy kisses her. I felt so bad when Charlie Brown, uh, all the gang turned on him and called him a blockhead. But the best part of that movie is no doubt when everybody's laughing and making fun of that puny little Christmas tree Charlie Brown had picked out. And then a very frustrated Charlie Brown steps up and cries out, is there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Then Linus steps up on the stage and requests the spotlight and recites. And they were in that same country, shepherds, abiding in the field, watching over the flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And after reading the story, 
Linus then says, that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. And Linus and Charles Schultz, they got it right. That is what Christmas is all about. Now let me ask you a question. What is it that you are really wanting to get out of Christmas? What is it that would make your Christmas wonderful and satisfying? Is it all the family being together tomorrow and being happy? Or a feeling that you define as the holiday spirit? Maybe it's finding the right present or giving the right present. These things are so important and they are great. But the truth is, if these things are what we put our spotlight on tomorrow, then we will miss the true meaning of Christmas and be left disappointed. Someone put it in a beautiful picture that I can see in my mind. It was evening on the day after Christmas, and the night watchman in a large department store was making his usual rounds. Floor after floor presented the same wild disorder. Piles of mixed up merchandise, boxes and cartons of all shapes and sizes uncovered and all out of the place. It looked like a miniature tornado could have not left a worse mess inside. But a bigger shock came to the watchman as he looked under one of the counters and found a man who apparently had been pushed aside and trampled in the mad rush of shoppers on Christmas Eve. The man was an absolute stranger. No one knew who he was. And there was no item on his clothes to provide a single clue to his identity. But when his body was examined, they found nail prints in the palms of his hands. Tonight, Tomorrow, don't forget Jesus. The star reminds us that the true meaning of joy of Christmas comes when we all focus on the right thing. And what was it that the wise men were focused on? Verse 2 tells us they came to Jerusalem and said, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. You see, the wise men, they were searching, they were looking for Jesus. And it was his star in the sky. You see, Christmas for them was an opportunity to see and to worship Jesus. And I pray that is what we are looking for this Christmas. An experience to worship, a fresh glimpse of Jesus who is born King of the Jews. And if our desire this Christmas is to see and to worship Jesus then we will not be disappointed with our experience. You see, Jesus would later grow up and he would tell his disciples, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the, will have the light of life. You see, the real star in this story is Jesus. God always has pointed his people to a savior. And tonight, he's doing the same thing. He's pointing us to his son, Jesus. One night, a man and a small child were walking slowly through the streets of New York City, and the child was captivated by all the lights of the city, particularly the many service stars hanging on the windows of many homes. Each star hanging proudly proclaimed that a son from that house had given his life for his country. And every time the little boy would walk by and see one of those stars, he would just clap. Finally, they came to this wide gap between two of the houses where all they could see was the black velvet of the sky. They looked and they saw the evening star right in the middle, shining so brightly. And the little boy would shout, Daddy, Daddy, look, Daddy, God must have given his son too because there's a star in his window. And my hope and my prayer for you and your family this Christmas is that you would see his star, that you would see and that you would experience and that you would worship Jesus, the light of the world. Composer John Henry Hopkins Jr. summed it best in his Christmas carol when he wrote, O star of wonder, O star of night, star with royal beauty bright, Westward leading, still proceeding, and I hope this is our prayer, guide us to thy perfect light. Would you pray with me?
Father, tonight we are so thankful for that special star that it was no ordinary star, but it was his star. And Father, I pray that you would help us to turn our hearts toward you. Let us not get caught up in the hustle and bustle of tonight and tomorrow and miss the chance to celebrate the gifts of your hope and peace and joy and love that you sent on that first Christmas. Because on that first Christmas, you gave us your son wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. God, we thank you for your immeasurable gift. And now, help us to remember that you are the light of the world, and in you there is no darkness. In Jesus Christ I pray, amen. Joy to the world. 